for this glorious day. Father, we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for your death, your burial, and your resurrection. Father, we thank you for we are products of your resurrection. Father, this day, Lord, as we rightly divide your word of truth, Lord, as we come to the knowledge of truth, Father, I pray that let our eyes of understanding be enlightened. Let our eyes be flooded with so much light, O God. Let God be revealed, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We honor you. We give you thanks. We give you praise for your word, O God, that is forever established, O God, in heaven. Heavenly Father, I thank you. Father, as we study to show ourselves approved unto you, O God, as we rightly divide your word of truth, let our eyes of understanding be enlightened. Let every scale be removed from our faces, O God. Let every veil be removed, O God, in the name of Jesus, O God. Let every shadow be revealed that we may have the substance, Christ, the reality of the shadows. Father, I thank you and I honor you. For everybody that is under the sound of my voice, I declare and I decree. Let every veil is taken off in the name of Jesus. Light comes to them. Their eyes of understanding enlightened in the name of Jesus. Father, meet them at their point of need. Whatever it is that they are trusting you for. Father, let there be a manifestation in the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We honor you. We give you thanks. We give you praise in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Ah, glory to God forevermore. Praise God. Like I said, I don't want to take too much of your time. We want to get straight. Uh, we want to get straight into it. Uh, the last broadcast I couldn't finish. It was quite a, a, a long teaching. So today what I'll do is I'll continue from where we left last week. Uh, we are going to continue from where we left last week. Praise God. We are going to continue from where we left last week. Praise God. Praise God. The letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. Oh, today I'm going to... Uh, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> Praise God. So make sure you've got your notebooks, notepads, Bibles, um, wherever you write your notes. Prophetess Agnes, it is good to see you. It is good to see you. I'm really humbled because considering the time from where you're watching from, uh, thank you. God bless you. I don't take it for granted. We thank God. Right, like I said, I don't want to take too much of your time. We want to get straight into it. This is a continuation from last week. So make sure you've got your notebooks, notepads, Bibles, wherever you write your notes, because I'll be giving quite a lot of scripture. And I don't want you to just say, oh, yeah, it was, oh, yeah, no. I want you to get those scriptures, write them down, go through them again and again and again. Read them through. Pray in the Spirit. Read them through. Pray in the Spirit, you know. <laughs> So, yeah. So, I don't want you to listen to argue. I want you to listen to learn. There's a difference. There are people who listen to argue. Listen to learn. Praise God. So, this is a continuation from, from the previous message. Now, I want you to remember this. This is very important. Let me just establish a foundation here. From obvious, from where we left from, I want you to understand something that... Um, there are two mountains that are referred in the Bible that are very specific, uh, significant within the body of Christ. We have Mount Sinai and we have Mount Zion. Remember, we are dealing with the letter kills. The letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. Many people know that scripture, but they don't know what it means. So I'm going to break it down for you so that you understand. Like I always tell people, you know, we are spirit beings, but we it, it, don't be too spiritual in the sense that you forget your brains. Paul would tell uh, Timothy, he says, study, 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 study to show thyself approved. So there's an element of studying. There's an element of learning, learning, learning. So it's not about, oh, it's just, it's just spiritual. Yes, we are spirit beings. But they got to be an element of studying. So I always tell people that there is an element of education that is required even in the body of Christ. Don't think because now you are born again, you don't need education. Hey, 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 hey. This is why men are failing to rightly divide the word of truth because they are lacking education. You need some level of education. 
a little bit of it. <laughs> Don't be just too... Yeah, we are spirit beings. Absolutely, we are spirit beings. Correct, but you need some education here. <laughs> I didn't say that. It was Paul that was writing to Timothy. He said, study, study, study to show thyself approved unto God. So there's an element of studying. So studying requires reading. And reading requires understanding. Praise God. So there are two mountains. Mary, it is good to see you, sir. God bless you. Uh, is that Na Nakir Nakira Anderson? God bless you. Right, let's get straight into it. There are two mountains that are mentioned in the Bible that are very significant to what we are teaching about. We are teaching about the letter killeth and the spirit giveth life. Right? So we have Mount Sinai and we have Mount Zion. Those are ministries. Okay? Mount Sinai, Mount Zion. Both of them, they are ministries. So there are people that are preaching from Mount Sinai and there are people that are preaching from Mount Zion because both of them, they are ministries. Mount Sinai and Mount Zion, they are both ministries. So many are preaching from Mount Sinai and others are preaching from Mount Zion. Remember, the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. So Mount Sinai is the letter. Mm. Which is written on table of stones. That's the ministry of condemnation. That's the ministry of death. That's the ministry of accusations. Mount Sinai. Anybody that is preaching from Mount Sinai is preaching death. The letter killeth. Is preaching condemnation. Is preaching accusations. Remember the law would find fault. It would accuse the brethren. That's why Jesus would say, Moses, the one that accuses you. He was not, he was not talking of Moses as the person, but Moses as the system, the law. So Mount Sinai is a place of death, the letter. Condemnation. Accusation. Mount Zion is a ministry written in the tablets of our hearts, on the tables of our hearts. The ministry of the Spirit. Remember, the letter killeth, the Spirit giveth life. Mount Sinai, death. Mount Zion, life. Mount Sinai, the, 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 the tables were written on, um, on stones. Mount Zion, in our hearts. So, these are two ministries. Rosemary, it is good to see you. Temba, it is good to see you. God bless you. I'm just laying a foundation because of it's a continuation from last week. So the ministry from Mount Sinai is conditional. The ministry of, from Mount Sinai is conditional. It places a demand on people. The ministry of Mount Sinai places demands on people. While the ministry from Mount Zion... Conditions and demands have been met in Christ. You have to understand this. Mount Sinai places demands on people. Mount Zion, the demands have been met in Christ. Watch this. Remember the Old Testament, I've taught you this, that these are not just books, these are relationships. The Old Testament is a relationship of what? I can do to please God while the New Testament is what God has, what Jesus has done that has pleased the Father on our behalf. These are relationships. They are not just books. The Old Testament, what I can do, works. The New Testament, what he has done on my behalf, what I did not deserve, that's grace. Mount Sinai works. Mount Zion, grace. Mount Sinai, death. Mount Zion, life. The letter killeth and the spirit giveth life. So the Old Testament and the New Testament, they are not just books. They are a relationship. So 
So when, when you understand that the Old Testament is a relationship of what I can do to please God. Old Testament is what I can do to please God. While the New Testament is what Christ has done that has pleased God on my behalf. So Zion reveals who you are in Christ. Zion reveals who you are in Christ. And what Christ has done and what Christ has made available for you. Okay. Rosemary, it is good to see you. Let's get, uh, let's get to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse number 6. 2 Corinthians 3 verse number 6. 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse number 6 okay okay let's look let's go to verse number 5 so that we have a pretext okay not that we are sufficient in ourselves to claim anything has come from us but our sufficiency is from God watch this who has made us he has made us sufficient to be ministers of what of the new covenant we have been made sufficient ministers of the new covenant covenant meaning we have been made sufficient ministers able ministers of the new testament he did not say he will make you the bible says he has made us able ministers sufficient ministers of the new covenant meaning the new testament and remember the new testament again is not books the new testament is in the blood of jesus okay yvonne it is good to see you now pay attention please pay attention what i'm teaching is heavy i know this is heavy stuff this is this is meats this is not milk this is meats you know like i always say to people i'm i don't come here to to preach a feel-good message Nah, I don't do a feel good message to please you, to entice you with enticing words. I don't do that. Yeah. So I say, oh, but this man, this man, you know, he should say things that I want to hear. I don't do that. I am not called to say things that you want to hear. I say things that he wants you to hear, not what you want to hear, what he wants you to hear. <laughs> now pay attention. All right. The Old Testament man, the Old Testament man of God is the focus. In the Old Testament, the man of God is the focus. The Old Testament, the man of God is the focus. While in the New Testament, Christ is the focus. Remember in the Old Testament, in the Old Testament, they would go, Hey Moses, please speak to God on our behalf. Hey Moses, this, yet that was not the plan. God had said, bring these guys to me. I want to speak to them. I want to relate with them. I want to have a, a, a relationship, a conversation with them. They rejected, said, no, 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 no. Moses, this your God is too heavy. Why don't you go and speak to God and come back and tell us what he says? So the Old Testament, the focus was on the man of God, while the New Testament, the focus is on Christ, not the man. I know. So when somebody is preaching from Mount Sinai, he will then tell you that without a prophet in your life, nothing moves. Because they are preaching from Mount Sinai, a place of condemnation, a place of accusation. The New Testament, the focus is on Christ. The Old Testament, the focus was on the men. By a prophet, by a what? This, it was focusing on the men. But in the New Testament, it focuses on Christ. Why? Hebrews chapter 1 verse number 1. In sundry times, God spoke to us by, by the prophets. He spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken. Not he will speak. He has spoken by his son christ jesus where is the son is in your inside so the focus is no longer on the man of god the focus is on christ but we still have people that are focusing on the man because they are preaching from mount sinai 
I am the man of God. Without me, nothing moves. Without me, yeah, this, I am this, I am that, I am that. Preaching from Mount Sinai. Remember, Mount Sinai is the letter that killeth. Mount Zion is the, the, the place of the Spirit that giveth life. So New Testament focuses on Christ. Old Testament focused on the men. You need to understand that. That's why we have a lot of idolatry within the church. People worshiping men. Unaware. All in the name of honor. I'm not saying don't honor the men of God or the women. Nah, there's a thin line. Because now you can't do anything. Oh, the man of God has to say something. I have to, ah, oh my God. I, I need the man of God to speak to me before I make this decision. Oh, I need to, oh, I need to. I can't sleep. The man of God has to, hey, hey, hey. That is no longer honor. That is worship. You have the spirit. When the spirit of truth comes, when the spirit, has the spirit of truth come? Yes, where is the spirit of truth? In you, he will lead you. So a believer is not in need of power. A believer is not in need of direction. The Holy Spirit that will come upon you is not just coming upon, he's coming to reside. He will lead you. He will guide you. Those who are sons of God are led. Those that are led by the Spirit, those that are led by the Spirit, they are the sons. So as a believer, you are led. That's why you are a son. <laughs> Joseph Benjamin, it is good to see you. Hey, my, my premier, it is good to see you. Evelyn, it is good to see you. Right, watch this. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Verse number two to three. Watch this. You yourselves are you speaking to you. You yourselves are our letter of recommendation written on our hearts to be known and to be read by all. You, Pastor PJ, it is good to see you. You yourselves, you. That's why Paul says, we are written epistles. So people, when they see Pastor PJ, they should, they should be like, I need to repent. I need to change my mind. I, I need this God that you serve. But most of you, at your workplaces, people don't even know that you're a believer or an unbeliever. They don't. They have to, uh, uh, nah, I doubt it. Because you are not a written epistle. That portrays Christ. He says, you yourselves, watch this. You yourselves are our letter. You are our letter. So when I look at Rosemary, I should see the letter of Christ Jesus written. I should read as a Michael Aradia Sun Talabaskia. When I just see her, I'll be like, my God, Lord, I need to repent. I need to change my mind. For my eyes have seen the glory. Because you carry the glory. So when they see you, they got to see the glory. Remember, the Bible says you are the light of the world. A city that is set upon a hill that cannot be hid. So when people look at you, Florence, they should see the light. And they should come to that light. You are the light of the world. A city that is set upon a hill that cannot be hid. The Gentiles, they shall come to thy light. To thy knowledge. Kings they shall come to thy dwelling. You yourselves are our letter of recommendation. Written on our hearts. To be known and to be read by all. You have to be read by all. So when people start reading you. Say hey, I don't like people who just. No, 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 no. You are a letter. Question is what are they reading from you? What are they reading from you? The Bible says you should be read by all. When they see you, what are they reading? And you show that you are a letter from Christ delivered by us, written not with ink, but 
with the spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. The Old Testament, the tablets were on stones. The New Testament, the tablets are written in your hearts. The Old Testament, Mount Sinai, the letter. The New Testament, Mount Zion, the spirit. What are they reading when they see you? <laughs> the New Testament is written on stones or books. But in, in the New Testament, it is in the hearts. The New Testament is the spirit. The New Testament is the spirit of a born again man. The New Testament is the spirit of a born again man. A born again, a believer. Watch this. Verse 5. Look at verse 5. Oh no, verse 4. Such is the confidence that we have through Christ towards God. Not that we are sufficient in ourselves to claim anything is coming from us, but our sufficiency is from God, who has made us, who has made us sufficient ministers of the New Testament. We are able ministers of the New Testament. Able ministers of the New Testament. I want you to understand at the tenses, it's like I was saying that, you know, we are spirit beings, but there got to be a level of, of education in you. Watch this. Pay attention to the tenses. He says, ye, we have been made able ministers. He did not say he will make us able ministers. You have been made able ministers even before you fasted. Before you even knew how to fast, you were made a sufficient minister of the New Testament. So we preach the New Testament not of the letter because the letter killeth but the spirit giveth life. Remember your ministry, your ministry is a product of his resurrection. Your ministry is a product of his resurrection. Your ministry. Your ministry is a product of his resurrection that means in his resurrection in his resurrection we have access to revelation ah. <laughs> we have access to revelation there's a difference between experience and revelation you have peter who had experience but Paul had revelation. Ah. <laughs> so I don't even know who I'm speaking to. But right now I declare and I decree. That nothing will stop your ministry. In the name of Jesus. The gifts of, for your ministry. Came out of his resurrection. Upon his resurrection he gave some gifts. Some apostles. Prophets. Pastors. Shepherds. Evangelists. For the equipping of the saints. So your ministry, your ministry is a product of his resurrection. So I declare that nothing will stop your ministry. Nothing will stop your ministry because it's a product of his resurrection. After resurrection, people like Paul, people like Paul that never, that never, after, after his resurrection, I want you to see what happens. After his resurrection, people like Paul, they went about preaching the gospel. They did not go about breaking cases, breaking generational cases. I'm going to deal with that once and for all. Today. Today, I'm, I'm going, right now, I'm just laying a phone. I want to punish the devil like never before. Paul, after resurrection, he never went about looking for preaching, breaking cases, Breaking generational cases, breaking altars. Paul never, after resurrection. But before resurrection, they were doing that. Before resurrection, the New Testament, life, the spirit. Before resurrection, the letter, Mount Sinai. I'm going to deal with that in a few minutes. So when 
When Jesus rose from the dead, Paul, when he went out, they were not breaking cases. They were not giving people, they were not giving people sand. They were not giving people oils. They were not giving people all this nonsense. Tell you what, I want you to be very, very attentive because I am going to give you scriptures that you never thought were in the Bible, but are actually in the Bible. They, oh God, I'm too excited because the scriptures that I'm going to give you, we are going to rightly divide them. They are like there. There is no more arguing. Because I know people like arguing. But this, but this, no, please, I beg, I beseech you. Make sure you've got your notebooks. Write these scriptures that I'll be given today. Double trouble for the devil. But what did they do? They preached Christ. They did not preach breaking cases, generational cases, spiritual husband nonsense. There's no such nonsense as that. You know, here, you've got a spiritual husband. How can you have a spiritual husband? What did Jesus say? Spirits do not marry. Well, these, these Pharisees came to him and said, hey, 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 Jesus, this woman was married to five husbands. Hey, what, what? So after resurrection, who is going to be the husband? And Jesus says, what? We shall be like angels, meaning they don't marry. And you, where are you getting spiritual husband from? I know. Right now you'll be like, oh, don't preach what you don't know. Listen. I say this and I'll say it again. We are spirit beings. We are spiritual beings. But don't forget to carry your brain. There is an element of education that is needed. I always tell people, if you have, because English can be a bit tricky. So at times, if you are failing to really understand, just use your native language. Get a Bible for your own language. Maybe, it, because English can be vexing. At times it can be, woo, it can just go, woo. It is actually written, Jesus said it, that spirits do not marry. But you, you still have a spiritual husband. You are told you need to, we need to break this spiritual husband. You need to sow a seed. Preaching from Mount Sinai, condemnation. Preaching from Mount Sinai, the letter that killeth. But we have come unto Mount Zion, the city of the living God. I know. It might have been said by quite a lot of people. Listen, I honor every man of God and every woman of God that has gone ahead of me. But I stand on the word. Because they might have done certain things i've seen quite a lot of them that are now reforming they are coming back to the real gospel bit by bit but because of pride they cannot just come immediately they will now use oh god said god said god said listen i'm not here to make friends hello if you don't like what i preach no problem you just exit. Let those that have ears, that want to hear the truth. I stand for the truth. <laughs> I'm not here for association, for connection, that I'm connected to this one. I'm co Listen, I've been connected before, man. I've been there before. What do you tell me? What can you tell me? I've been there before. I've been there before. The people that you're like, oh, I wish I could have be with this man. I wish I could see this woman. I've been there with them, rubbing shoulders with them. So it's not about association. I don't need association. I don't. I thought I would just let you know that I'm not here for association. I've been there before. I know how it feels to be on big platforms. I know. I've been there. But after all that, I still felt empty. Look at Acts. <clears throat> Acts chapter 8. I know somebody said, oh yeah, 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 fly by. You know, yeah, these, these guys who just come up. I, I'm not, I didn't just come up, by the way, so that you know. I didn't just not come up. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Calm down. He said, calm down, love. <laughs> Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8, Acts 8, verse number 5 to 6. Acts 8, verse number 5 to 6. 
The Bible says Philip went down to the city of Samaria and he proclaimed again that word proclaim he preached and he proclaimed to them the Christ. He did not go and preach generational case, breaking altars, breaking this, breaking this, breaking that. No, he went and the Bible says he procre proclaimed Christ. Please calm down, love. Right? He proclaimed Christ to them. Watch this. And crowds with one accord paid attention to what was being said by Philip. When they heard him and saw the signs that he did, for unclean spirits crying out with a loud voice came out of many who had them and many who were paralyzed or the lamb were healed. How did healing come? Philip was preaching Christ. As he was preaching Christ, healing was taking place. Miracles were taking place while Christ was being preached. While Christ was being preached, the lamp would walk, the deaf would hear, the blind would see, and clean spirits would check out. There was no take this oil, take this water, take this sand, take this grass. You have professors, doctors that would sit down and be eating grass. All in the name of spiritual thing. Carry your brain. You end up eating grass. Eating nonsense. We are spirit beings, 100%. But carry your brain. While, while Christ was preached. While Christ was preached. Miracles were happening. And people don't like the word. People like to be razzmatazzed. They like to see people falling and rolling and vomiting and nonsense, whatever. That's what they, they say, yeah, this is now power. No, no, sir. Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel. For it is the power of God. What is the power of God? The gospel. So while the gospel was preached... While Philip was preaching the gospel in Samaria, miracle was taking place as the gospel was being preached. But yet people don't like the word. People don't like the word. People will just, if I was to say, yeah, tomorrow is going to be prophetic. I'll be prophesying one-on-one, -on -one, what, what, or I'll be going deeper. I'll be de he will have 20,000 views here. An evil generation that seeks for a sign. But none shall be given except of Jonah. Why Jonah? The death, the burial, and the resurrection. That's why Paul says, when I came to you, I desired to know nothing else. I did not want to hear about prophetic water, prophetic salt, prophetic nonsense. I wanted to hear Christ. I did not want to hear about how to make it, 10 steps to success. I did not want to hear about that. All I wanted to hear about was Christ. Because when Christ is preached, all these things that you are seeking for, they fall into place. When Philip was in Samaria preaching, preaching, he was preaching. He proclaimed the gospel of Christ. Healing took place. And I declare and I decree, you will preach Christ and everything about you will submit to the word of God. I declare it so. Everything concerning your life, it will submit to the word of God. Whether it is healing as I am preaching, you might not hear me, but your body will hear the word. He said to the centurion, the centurion said, Lord, my servant is sick. My servant is sick. Jesus said, don't worry. I will come and I will lay hands and I'll give him some oil. And the centurion said, no, 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 no. you don't have to come. You just speak the word and I know my servant will be made whole. There was no, you need to come and you need to you sow a seed in this oil, sow a seed. No, he said, you don't have to come to my house. Speak the word because I understand the word because the Bible declares the word. I have sent forth the word and it will not come back to me void until it accomplishes. And I declare and I decree, I speak the word of God in your situation. Whatever 
it is, whatever affliction in your life, I speak the word of God. I speak the resurrection power of God for the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead resides in your mortal body. The Bible says it shall quicken your mortal. I declare your body be quickened in the name of Jesus. I don't have to come. I will just speak the word and people don't like the word. So the enemy has kept people away from the word. Is leading people to dramas, having comedians in church, all in the name of laughter is best medicine. Making the church a circus, bringing clowns in the church to entertain the gods, not the sheep. Gods. And I declare, you will manifest. You will manifest in this season. For what Christ did in his death, his burial, and his resurrection was complete. He, what did he do? He disarmed principalities and powers for your sake. And that same power has been bestowed upon you. All power has been given unto me. And that power resides in your inside. The ability to discharge principalities and powers, it is within you. I declare you will reign in life. You will reign in life. Too much nonsense now. Too much entertainment in the church. The church has lost its savoir. It has lost its relevance. Too much drama. Too much entertainment. Bring in comedians. All in the name of laughter. I declare this season. You will manifest. These are the days of the sons of God. Not the days of servants. These are the days of the sons of God. Not the days of Elijah. These are the days of the sons of God. And you will manifest. Because you are written epistles. They will look at you. They will be like, listen, I just want to receive what you have. I, I need to receive life. When they just look at you, they'll be like, I beg. Please allow me. Let me receive what you have. Because of the glory that is upon you, I can behold the glory. Because when Jesus was, rose from the dead, the glory that, was, that he had in before was restored. And you are in him. By identification, you were crucified with Christ. You were buried with Christ. You rose with Christ. You were glorified with Christ by identification. So that glorification of Christ is your glorification. So when they look at you, they should see the glory of God. What he can do, you can do. What he has, you have. You are a product of his resurrection. You are a product of his resurrection. You are not a product from Mount Sinai. You are not a product of generational cases. You are not a product of, of uh, whatever. You are not a product of Mount Sinai. You are a product of Mount Zion. You are a product of his resurrection. If there was no resurrection, there would not be a Cam Jackson. You are a product of his resurrection. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things, watch this, all things have passed away. All things, what, me, what does all things mean? All things means all things. So how then can a believer be in need of deliverance? Deliverance, you have come unto Mount Zion, the city of the living. So Mount Zion is not a place for deliverance. Mount Zion is a place of the delivered. For he has translated us from the kingdom of darkness into his marvelous light that is deliverance movement from one location to another movement from darkness into his light affliction might come because jesus said it for many are the afflictions of the righteous but the lord delivers them all affliction will come but god will deliver them all you have come unto and to Mount Zion. Mount Zion is not a place for deliverance. Mount Zion is a place of the delivered. 
You are able ministers of the New Testament. Not because you fasted. You were made able ministers before you even knew how to fast or even knew what was fasting. You were made able ministers. You're a new creature. You are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. Now I know <clears throat> you're asking, this is the question you're asking. You're asking, what about the old? What about, so are you saying that we should not read the Old Testament? No. We still read the Old Testament for reference. For reference. Second Timothy. Second Timothy <clears throat> chapter 316. Second Timothy 316. Second Timothy 316 to 17. Second Timothy 316 to 17. The Bible says what? All scripture is breathed out by God and it is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. So we use it for reference. So the Old Testament was powered. Watch this. <clears throat> the Old Testament was powered by the blood of goats. The Old Testament was powered by the blood of goats, while the New Testament is powered by the blood of Jesus. The blood of goats could not save them, but the blood of Jesus speaks better things. Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. He did not say the sins of the church. The sins of the world. So the Old Testament was powered by blood, by the blood of goats, while the New Testament is powered by the blood of Jesus. Remember, the Old Testament is a shadow. Now, I want to punish the devil. If there was anything that was distracting you, please, this is the time that I don't want you to miss what I'm about to say. Hebrews chapter 10. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1. Hebrews chapter 10 verse number 1. I'm going to read it slowly. Hebrews, I'm going to read it slowly. And then I'm, I'm going to read it slowly. It's very slow. So that it gets into you. Maybe at times I read fast, it might just... Shoo. Hebrews chapter 10 verse number 1. For since the law was but a shadow... Let me read. Okay, should I read it again slowly? Should I read it again slowly? All right. For since the law, the law was but a shadow. It was a shadow of what? It was a shadow of good things to come instead of the true form of these realities. It can never be. It can never, by the same sacrifices that are continually offered every year, make perfect those who draw near him. The Old Testament, please, I beg you. The Old, the law was a shadow of good things that were to come. Queen, it is good to see you. Yvonne, it is good to see you. The law was a shadow <laughs> of things, not just things, of good things that were to come. Of good things. So it, those were shadows of the good things that were to come. Okay, please stay there. I'm, uh, today, <laughs> today somebody has been delivered from religion. <laughs> Watch this. <clears throat> it can never by the same sacrifices that, that were made continually, offered every year, make perfect those who draw near him. Otherwise, would they not have ceased to be offered since the worshippers, having once been cleansed, would no longer have any conscience, consciousness of sins. But in these sacrifices, 
there is a reminder of sins every year. Mount Sinai. It reminds you of sins every year. Look, look, look at it this way. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Hey, 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 pay attention. Watch this. The Old Testament would find fault. This is why the Old Testament would record the promiscuous life of Solomon. The Old Testament would remind you of Rahab, the prostitute. The Old Testament would remind you of uh, uh, the man of God who made the prostitute. The Old Testament would remind you of the promiscuous life of David. The Old Testament, because it was finding fault because of the sacrifices that they made of the blood of goats, it could not cleanse them. But the New Testament, they, it does not find fault. And when, 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 when they talk about a Abraham in the Old Testament, they talk about Abraham sleeping with his, um, with his housemaid. But in the New Testament, all faults, all records have been eradicated by reason of Jesus. Now, in the New Testament, they don't talk about their past. They now talk about Rahab by faith, Abraham by faith, Solomon by faith, David by faith, New Testament. Old Testament, it would find fault. Mount Sinai, the letter killeth. Condemnation. Here Jesus says what? Remember ye not the former things. Kabataya. So the New Testament in his blood eradicates the law. It was a shadow of good things that were to come. Okay, stay there. I know right now you're like, oh, don't worry. Relax. But in these sacrifices, there is a reminder of their sins every year. They were reminded of their sins, so they were sin conscious. They were reminded of their sins every year. But in the New Testament, the sacrifice that Jesus did was once and for all, and it was perfect. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2, verse 15 to 17. Colossians 2, verse 15 to 17. Colossians chapter 2, verse 15 to, this, to 17. Colossians. He disarmed the rulers and the authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them in him. Therefore, therefore, let no one pass judgment on you in questions of food, in questions of drink, or with regard to a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath. Please pay attention. These are shadows of things to come, but the substance belongs to Jesus. Let me read that again. Let me read it slowly so that it gets right here. So that when it gets there, and then it gets here, and then it comes back here, and then you change your mind. Watch this. Ye disarmed the rulers and the authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them in him. Therefore, verse number 16 is powerful. Very, 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 very powerful. Very powerful. Watch this. Therefore, let no one pass judgment on you in questions of food. You hear people, don't eat pork. It's got demons. Let no one pass judgment on you in regards to food or drink or with regard to festivals. Festivals, we're talking about Holy Communion, the Passover. Or with regard to festivals or the new moon or the Sabbath. Hey, you don't go to this or you don't do this on a Sabbath. Hey, what Sabbath is not a day, Sabbath is a person. Now pay attention to the next verse, verse number 17. These are a shadow. These are a shadow of things to come. But the substance belongs to Christ. What are we saying? Holy communion was a shadow of things that were to come. Water baptism. Shadow of things that were to come. Oils. Shadow of things that were to come. Salt. Shadow of things that were to come. I did not say it. It's in your Bible. These were but a shadow of things to come. Water baptism. Hey, 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 hey. There's nothing there. 
It was a shadow of things that were to come. And the substance of those shadows is Christ. So they were immersed in water. It was a shadow of you being born again. You are immersed in Christ. They ate bread. Holy communion. What they say, holy communion. Obvious, holy communion, that word is not even in the Bible. It was a shadow. It, it was not the bread that they were eating. Because Jesus says, I am the bread of life. So what are you doing right now? You are eating the bread of life. So that, it was a shadow of the real things that were of good things to come. And the substance belongs to Jesus. So don't let anyone judge you for not eating their holy communion or going for water uh, swimming, swimming lessons. And some of you just do water baptism because you just want to see naked people. Nonsense. God punished the devil. It was but a shadow. Make sure you get that scripture in your head. It was but a shadow. It in your Bible. It was a shadow of good things that were to come. And the substance of those shadows is Christ. The bread, Christ, I am the bread of life. The water, I, Jesus, I am the living water. It was a shadow. That water was a shadow of what was of the good things that were to come. What are the good things? The substance of the good things is Christ. I am the living water. That water, there's nothing there. This water in your water bottle and all that, there's nothing there. Jesus is the living water. Jesus is the bread of life. Jesus is the tree of life. I am the life. Jesus is the, the Lord of the Sabbath. Sabbath is not a day. Those were a shadow of good things that were to come. God punished the devil. Don't let anyone judge you for not partaking of their own. holy communion or swimming exercises, water baptism. There's nothing there. Those were a shadow of what was to come. It is not about being dipped. You can be dipped in water 20, 50 times and still not born again. It was a shadow and the substance of that shadow is Christ. You've been born again. You have been baptized into Christ. You have been immersed into. What is to immerse? To forge in. To become one. It's not about water. You can go to Jordan River. For all I care. Go to River Naira. Go and be baptized in... A, the Atlantic Ocean, the Pacific, for all I care, it was a shadow of the good things that were to come. So what was being communicated, the, the baptism that was being communicated is you being born again. You are immersed in Christ. Baptism to immense. God punished the devil. So if you stay with the law, you stay with the shadow. You stay with the law. You stay with the shadow. You stay on Mount Sinai. You are with shadows. You stay with the law. You stay with shadows. Many fail in life. Because of condemnation. Right now you are trying to do something. Say, I can't do it. I, I, I did this yesterday. Condemnation. You condemn yourself. Condemnation brings fear. But we have come unto Mount Zion where there is no condemnation. There is now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. Don't let anybody judge you for not eating their bread and ribena. That bread and ribena, there is nothing there. <laughs> it was but a shadow of the good things. That bread was symbolic of Christ. The manna was symbolic. I am the bread of life. So what are you doing right now? Right now you are eating the bread. The word. How do I know? In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And the same word in John 1.14 became flesh and dwelt among us. So right now, what are you eating? You are eating the body of Jesus. You are eating the word. It is not eating bread and ribena and being baptized, going for swimming lessons. There's nothing there. Just swimming lessons. Just want to see naked people. <laughs> God punish the devil. So when you preach from a place of guilt, sick people don't get healed. That's why you end up now fabricating and putting people in wheelchairs. God punish the devil. So there's a miracle here, there's a miracle here, there's a miracle here, Papa, there's a miracle here, what, what, what. Stage managed. God punish the devil. Today I told you, last week I was not here. 
it's double trouble. <laughs> and like I said, and I'll say it again, I'm not here for, for you know, association. Mm -mm. I don't do association. I'm a one-man band. <laughs> yeah. Those that, in, those that really want the message of Christ, we are together forever. Those that want shadows, stay in Mount Sinai. I cannot be... I can I mean I'm I'm too busy to be to be traveling from Mount Zion to Mount Sinai. I go to Mount Sinai, we preach condemnation, we preach law, we preach give so that you'll be given. Mount Sinai. Conditions. You you should you should do this for God to do that. You should do this for God to do that. That's Mount Sinai. Hey, I'm in Mount Zion. Where everything that I needed to do, yet I could not do it. Christ has done it on my behalf and it has pleased the Father. That's why in Mount, in, in Mount Sinai, it is all I will, I will, I will. In Mount, in, in Mount Zion, sorry, it's I will, I will, I will. In Mount Zion, if thou shalt, if thou shalt, conditions, what you can do to please God. Mount Zion, what Christ has done that has pleased the Father on my behalf. I could not pay for it. This is what we call grace. I could not pay for it. I could not save myself. They tried it with animals. But it was only for a year. And they were sin conscious. So they kept thinking, oh, I did this. Most of you right now, you are failing to do certain things in life because you are thinking, oh, yesterday I made a mistake. Oh, yesterday I did this. You are now condemning yourself. But the Bible says there is now no condemnation to those that are in Christ. So if you sin, the Bible says there is an advocate, Jesus. He intercedes on your behalf. Right now you are thinking, so are you saying we should just sin? Because, the reason why you are thinking like that, because you are too carnal. You are carnal. Why would you be thinking like that? Why are you thinking of sinning? Why? You are carnal. I said, if you... Don't be thinking, oh, but so are you saying, so we should just sin? No, no, no. You are carnal. Don't be carnal. Why are you think why are you even thinking like that? You're kinda. <laughs> like I said, miracles they are not a validation. Miracles are not a validation of Christ. I said that before and I'll say it again. Look at Second Thessalonians. God punished the devil. People see miracles and say, Oh yeah, the, the power of God is in this place because you've seen a miracle. You cool down. Miracles they are not a validation of Christ. I'm gonna ex explain something to you. 2 Thessalonians 2, 2, 9. <clears throat> 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 9. The coming of the lawless one is the activity of Satan with all power and false signs. That means there will be signs, but they are false. And wonders. That means there will be wonders. They are lying wonders. They are miracles, lying wonders. And with all wicked deception for those who are perishing because they refuse to love the truth, and so to be saved. They refuse. People are refusing to love the truth. They don't want the truth. So they allow lying wonders, deception, miracles. Remember this. Let me say this. Let me say this. <clears throat> Let me say this. Are you ready for this? <laughs> miracles are an afterthought. Miracles are an afterthought, for it was not so in the beginning. And every time we say beginning, it means Genesis. There were no miracles in Genesis, because everything that Jesus, that God created was good and perfect. He created this, it was good. He created that, it was good. He created this, it was good. So miracles are an afterthought. Everything was perfect. The introduction of miracles was seen in Exodus chapter number 4. When, when Moses went before God said, Lord, these people will not believe me. When I tell them, what, what will I do? I, they will not believe me. Then God said, don't worry. You shall put your hand in your pocket. And you pull it out. It was leprosy. You shall take a, a, a staff, throw it down. It shall turn into a serpent. Pick it up. It shall turn to a, into a staff. That was the introduction of miracles in Exodus chapter 4 from verse 1 to 4. The introduction of miracles. But in Genesis, it was not so. Everything was perfect. So a miracle is an afterthought. 
It was not the plan of God for miracles. It was an afterthought. Because everything was perfect. Because everything that God does is perfect. You are perfect. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. You are perfect. In Christ Jesus. So showing miracles does not validate God. Because even native doctors, soothsayers, they do miracles. So it's not a validation of God. But the difference now is with sound doctrine. Sound. Sound doctrine. <laughs> now look at Matthew. <clears throat> so when you see people doing miracles, they'll say, the power of God is here. Yeah. Cool down. Remember, there is another gospel that comes with another Jesus, that comes with another spirit. So miracles are not a validation. A miracle was an afterthought because in Genesis it was not so. Miracles were introduced in Exodus when Moses said, Lord, what should I tell these people? They will not believe me. He said, don't worry. Put your hand in your pocket. Brought it out. It was leprosy. Put it back in. Leprosy had gone. Take your stuff. Throw it down. Turned into a serpent. Picked up the serpent. The, the, the serpent turned back into a stuff. That was the introduction of miracles. So it, they are an afterthought. It was not God's plan for miracles. Look at Mark. Mark 16. God punished the devil. Mark 16, 20. Mark 16, verse number 20. Mark 16, 20. My big brother Haman, it's good to see you, sir. Watch this. And they went out and preached everywhere, while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the message. What was God doing? While they were proclaiming the gospel, the Lord, the Bible says, the Lord worked with them. The Lord worked, worked with them, and he confirmed the message. What was the message that they are preaching? The Caruso, the gospel, the death, the burial, and the resurrection. As they were preaching that message, the Bible says, and Jesus worked with them and he confirmed their words with signs and wonders. Not lying wonders from Thessalonians. The devil's lying wonders. So the key word there is the word. He confirmed the word. He confirmed the word keyword word and it is it is in hearing the word that is the greatest miracle it is in the hearing of the word because faith cometh by hearing so faith does not come by miracles or testimonies faith does not come by testimonies it's, it's not written anyway in the bible from genesis to revelation Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. So faith will come when you hear the word. Faith does not come when you see miracles. Because Jesus in his time, he did miracles. And the same people he did miracles to, they still did not believe him. They did not believe him. They persecuted him. They crucified him. They did not believe him. After he had done miracles. So miracles, they are not a validation of the presence of God. And miracles, they don't bring faith. What brings faith is the hearing of the word. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. John. Look at John the Baptist. The Bible says, out of all that are born of women, John is the greatest of them all the greatest prophet now john did not do a miracle at all not even one not even half a miracle yet you had people like joshua that would stop the earth from rotating yeah, by the way it's the earth that rotates it's not the sun he stopped the earth that's why we have a leap here they are confused. What happened to that year? It's Joshua. He stopped the earth. <laughs> and Joshua like that. Then you have people like Elijah. You have people like Elisha. All these people did wonders. But the Bible says, among all those that are born of women, John is the greatest of them all. 
yet John did not do a miracle. So what is it that John did? It was in the words of John. John revealed Christ. Behold the Lamb of God that taken. It's the message of Christ that validates the presence of God. So it's not in doing miracles because they are lying wonders. People can just... So John revealed Christ. So it's in the revelation of Christ. Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin. So the validation of God, the validation of God, the validation of God is his word. Okay, look at Jeremiah. <clears throat> yeah, let me quickly do this and, and, and close because uh, I don't want to take too much of your time. Look at Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 4. Then the Lord said to me, you have seen well, for I am watching over my word to perform it. So the validation of God is his word. Forever, O Lord, your word is established. Forever, O Lord, your word is forever established in heaven. So what you need to do is just preach the word. Stop all these gimmicks. Because people now have, have got certain messages that they want to bring people to themselves, you know. They preach a message that is, that is emotionally connected to people. They are not bringing people to Christ, they are bringing people to themselves. Just preach the word. Preach the word. And I declare, and I declare and I decree that you will stay true to your calling stay true to your calling whether you remain alone as long as you are true to your calling i think i saw a post uh, by i think one of my beloved uh women of god uh, evelyn harris she posted something very profound that now i've got to a point of understanding now she she came to a, a place of ginosko knowledge epignosis she now came to a place of accurate precise comprehensive insight of who she is now and i'm like wow this is powerful that post is powerful very powerful prophetess georgette it is good to see you god bless you now look at second timothy second timothy second timothy chapter four just preach the word just preach the word. Forget all this. Forget all this nonsense. Just preach the word. Don't try to, to improvise. Don't try to, to make... You, you want to preach something that you know, yeah, people want to hear this. No, 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 no. It's, the, mess, the gospel is not a feel-good message. Just preach the word as it is. Second Timothy. Chapter 4, verse number 3. Watch this. Watch what the Bible says. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound doctrine, sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves preachers. Preachers that will suit their own passions. You accumulate preachers. You want to hear, I will make it. Ooh, I will make it. Some of you, all you want to hear is, men of God, Things are not working in my life. Please tell me. Who is, who, is, who is behind it? Is it my mother? Is it my uncle? Is it my sister? Hey, hey, hey. Many of you, families have been destroyed by false prophets, false teachers that will come and say, yeah, things are not working in your life, my dear. I'm seeing like your uncle. There's no uncle, Oga. Just rise up and do something. Uh, like I always say, let me give an example of my brother, Herman here. Herman is a businessman. He's doing business. He's got, his, uh, he's got his companies. He's got care companies. He's got agencies all over the shop. And somebody else who does not have that. And they would want that. But they did not take the first step to start doing that and or educate themselves in that area. They go to some prophet or some pastor or some evangelist, some bishop. Say, yeah, I'm seeing it's like there's an altar in your family that is blocking you. Oga, there's no altar in your family. You just need to wise up, educate yourself in that area. Hey, you're not getting married because I see there's like your auntie. She's holding you. She's tying you somewhere. 
How can anti be tying me somewhere? How can anti be tying a believer? The Bible says you are seated in the heavenlies, far above aunties, far above principalities. Sister, just change the way you do things. Dress up nicely. You know, take, spend more time in the bath. Don't just speak anyhow. And then you come here and say, there is a devil that is fighting my marriage. You, you. You speak anyhow. You talk anyhow. You talk like a starter motor. And you think men will stand for that. And then you come and say, there is a, a woman in your village. There is no woman in a village. No. There is no woman in a village. If you are a believer, I want you to get this in your, in, your, in, your, in your everything, in your head, in your spirit. If you are a believer, you are seated in the heavenlies. You, are not, you should not be afraid of witches and wizards. You have been given power, authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions. Serpents and scorpions was figurative. You are a product of his resurrection. Let's change up. Go to college or something. Do a course or something. Don't just come here and say, there's a, there's a spirit fighting me. My progress. You're failing to manage yourself. You want to blame some auntie. Many people don't talk to their family members. They don't talk to their... They don't because they've been told that this one is fighting you. God punish the devil. Second Timothy, he says, for the time is coming when they will not endure sound doctrine. They want to hear what they want to hear. You will make it. I see money coming. I see this. I see this. You will make it. I see five wedding gowns. I see this. I see him. That's the message you want to hear. That message does not save. That message does not save. When you have Christ, you have everything. When Christ is unveiled, the believer is revealed. For you to know who you are, you have to know him. But you don't want to hear the word. You just want, man of God, just tell me. What do I need to do? Nah. Second Corinthians. I'm about to close. <clears throat> Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse number 13. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse number 13. Praise God. Not like Moses, who would put a veil over his face so that the Israelites might not gaze at the outcome of what was being brought. He put a gaze. He put a, a veil. He put a veil. The, you see, it says, not like Moses that would put a veil over his face to the Israelites, not to gaze at the outcome, at the outcome of of being brought to an end. I want you to pay attention to that word at an end. You would put a veil so that they will not gaze of the outcome. Watch this. They will not gaze of the outcome. Key word, outcome of the end. Are you here? The word end there is fulfillment. Why? Fulfillment of the Old Testament is fulfillment of the demands. The end of the demands. If, you, if I do, watch this, if I do, I do. If you do, I do. If you don't do, I won't do. Upon all the demands... Watch this. Upon all those demands, if you break one, you broke all. If you break one, you break all. But the New Testament now puts the demands on God. I will. I will. I will. I will. I will. Old Testament, thou shall. Thou shall. Thou shall. New Testament, I will. Demands are on God. Old Testament demands are on you. That is what is called grace. The letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. The Old Testament is for servants. While the New Testament is for sons. Are we the sons of God? Look at Romans quickly. Uh, Bahata. Look at Romans quickly. Romans Romans chapter 8 verse 19 Romans 8 19 Romans 8 19 Ha the old testament is for servants 
Well, the New Testament is for sons. Watch this. For the creation awaits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. Are we the sons of God? Not servants. Old Testament, there were servants. The New Testament, we are sons. Ah, my God. Look at 1 John. I'm excited now. Look at 1 John. 1 John chapter 3, 2. 1 John 3, 2. 1 John chapter 3. Beloved, watch this. Beloved, we are God's children now. And what will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him. Because we shall see him as he is. We are the sons of God. When he shall appear, we shall see him face to face. Kabato shalahanta. We will see him face to face. Said Papa Jesus. We will see him face to face. So these are the days of the sons of God. These are not the days of Elijah. The days of calling fire. Jesus says, what manner of spirit is that? Reference, Luke 9, verse 54 to 55. What manner? He said, should we command fire like Elijah did? Jesus said, uh, uh, these are not the days of Elijah. These are the days of the sons of God. Do you know what manner of spirit you are operating under? The New Testament is a testament of sons, testament of the spirits, the demands the demands the demands are on God. The Old Testament, the demands are on you. If you shall, I will do. If you don't do, if you don't hearken, I will not. If you do this, I will do that. If you don't do this, I will do I won't do that. The New Testament is I have, I will, I have, I will, I will, I will. The demands are on him. Why? Because it was Jesus. The, remember the end of the fulfillment. Jesus fulfilled the Old Testament. Jesus is the fulfillment of the scriptures. And you and I are in Christ where the, the promises and the prophecies have been fulfilled. <laughs> the spirit of his son is not crying fire from heaven. <clears throat> the spirit of his son is crying, Abba. Father, these are the days of the sons of God, not the days of Elijah. These are the days of Elijah. I think it was Jacob something that sang that song. Behold, he comes riding on days of Elijah. These are not days of Elijah. <laughs> these are the days of the sons of God. These are the days of the sons of God. So that means anyone that is praying prayers of fire, everyone, hey, wherever you are, fall down and die. Fire, fire. Fire, fire. You are preaching from Mount Sinai. You need to come to Mount Zion. You need to come to the city of the living God. These are not the days of fire. These are the days of the sons of God. For the, the world, the earth eagerly awaits for the manifestation. Manifestation of what? Of the sons. Jesus is the fulfillment of the scriptures is the fulfillment of the promises is the fulfillment of the prophecies ha. jesus fulfilled watch this galatians galatians chapter 4 4 galatians 4 4 galatians 4 4 but when the fullness of time had come god sent forth his son born of woman under the law why under the law that he may fulfill the law to redeem those, my goodness, I'm about to pay attention. Okay? Are you still here? But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law so that they might receive adoption as of sons so jesus was born under the law to do what to redeem those that were under the law so if he redeemed you that were under the law that means you are no longer under the law oh god help me key word there is we under the law so now we are not under the law he came to redeem 
those who were under the law. Meaning, by reason of his appearance, he redeemed those who were under the law. That means if he redeemed those that were under the law, that means you are not under the law. You are no longer under the law because he came to redeem. Meaning, we are not under the law anymore. Meaning, under the law, the, under the law were servants, not sons. Look at verse number six of that same book. Oh, God punished the devil. And because you are sons, not servants, because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So we have been redeemed. Not only have you been redeemed, you have been redeemed and now you are a son. And the spirit of God in you is crying, Abba, Father. It's not crying fire. You are no longer, you are no longer friends with God. I know somebody saying, I am a friend of God. It sounds, it sounds spiritual. But you are not a friend of God. You are not a friend of God. You are not a friend of God. You are more than that. You are one with God. As he is, so are we. We are one. We have been made one with him. By reason of baptism. Immense. Not water. Not your, your shadow of water. Swimming lessons. <laughs> so, we are one. I am not a friend of God. We are one with God. As he is. So are we. By reason of his resurrection, we have been made one. So you hear people like, oh, we lift Jesus high. We lift him higher. That word lift, you have to be very, very... Some of these words go back to the original. That word lift Jesus high is kill. That word lift is kill. Is kill. Look at John 12. I want to show you something. And then I... I round up. John 12, verse 32. John 12, John chapter 12, verse 32. John chapter 12, verse 32. And when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. So when I am lifted, I will draw men. That lifting is killed. Because he can only draw men up by reason of his death, burial, and resurrection. That is the only reason that is the only reason that it would make him draw all men. So he says, lift him higher, lift him higher. Let's kill him. If I be lifted, just as Moses lifted the, the serpent in the wilderness, so shall the Son of Man be lifted. That lifting is kill, because when he's killed, he will draw all men to him. If I be lifted, I will draw all men to me. Meaning, when I die, meaning out of my death, sons will be brought out. Out of my death, sons will be brought out. Romans chapter 8. I think let's close with Romans chapter 8. Yeah, I think let's close with Romans chapter 8. But this part now is, is, is dangerous very dangerous you gotta be very very attentive romans chapter 8 verse number 3 romans chapter 8 verse 3 to 8 yeah verse 3 to 8 romans chapter 8 verse 3 to 8 romans chapter 3 verse 8 to verse 3 to 8 now pay attention i'm gonna close with this but it's very important that you hear this now. For God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do. What the law could not do. Yeah? By sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, 
he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fulfilled in us. In us. The demands have been fulfilled in us by reason of Christ. Okay? In order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh. When he's talking about who walk not according to the flesh, he's talking about those that are not born again. Because if you're born again, you're born of the spirit. You're not born of the flesh. Okay? Um, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit set their minds on, on, set their minds on the things of the spirit. For to set the mind on the flesh is death. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life. Remember, the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. Okay? For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile. The mind that is set on the flesh, the mind that is not born again, is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. What, what does that mean? Those that are not born again cannot please God. It's not, uh, yeah, yeah. my sister, you're now in the flesh, so you can't please God. That's not what it means. The flesh there is referring to unbeliever. Those that are unbelievers in the flesh, they cannot please God. Watch this. You, you that is listening to me, however, you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit if, in fact, the Spirit of God dwells in you. Did you hear that? The Spirit of God dwells in you. Why? Because you are born again. So you are not in the flesh. You are not in the flesh. If you are not born again, you are in the flesh. And you cannot please God because you are in the flesh. But if you are born again, you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit actually the spirit resides in you god resides in you stay there in romans romans chapter 7 romans 7 verse 1 to 6 romans 7 verse 1 to 6 romans chapter 7 verse 1 to 6 or do you not know romans chapter 7 verse 1 to 6 or do you not know brothers for i am speaking to those who know the law that the law is binding now pay attention Pay attention. This now sums up everything that we've been talking about. The letter killeth, the spirit giveth life. Preaching from Mount Sinai and preaching from Mount Zion. The Old Testament and the New Testament. These are not just books but relationships. Now this sums it up all. So I want you to pay attention. Or do you not know, brothers? For I am speaking to those who know the law that the law is binding on a person only as long as he lives so the law is binding on a person as long as he lives that means when he dies the law does not apply are you getting that you getting it good for a married woman is bound by the law to her husband while he lives. But if her husband dies, she is released from the law of marriage accordingly. She will be called an adulteress if she lives with another man while her husband is alive. But if the husband dies, she is free from that law. And if she marries another man, she is not an adulteress. Likewise, my brothers, you also have died to the law through the body of Christ so that you may belong to another, to him who has been raised from the dead, in order that you may bear fruit for God. For while we are living in the flesh, our sinful pa passions are roused by the law. 
were at work in our members to bear fruit for death. But now we are released from the law, having died to that which held us captive, so that we serve in the new way of the spirit and not in the old way of the written code. Let me explain that and then we close. A woman that is married is tied to the husband by reason of the law. But if the husband dies, the woman has been set free from the law. She can remarry. But if the woman remarries while the husband is still alive, she is regarded as an ad, ad, committing adultery. Adultery. Adultery, right? So the, Jesus is now saying, we were bound by the law. But the reason that Jesus died, yeah, by reason of his death, the law now does not apply to us. Remember, the woman is tied to the law. Of marriage, she's bound. But when the husband dies, she has been set free from the law. She can marry anyone she, 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 she wills. So Jesus' death set us free from the law. So now we can marry. Whoever, but in question, it's not whoever. But in terms of the woman, she can remarry anyone that she wants. So, the death of Jesus set us free from the law. Because we were bound by the law. So, by reason of his death, you and I have been set free from the law. So now we can remarry. That's why we are now married to Christ. We are now married to Christ. But before we could not be married to Christ because we would be regarded as committing adultery because our husband, the law, was still in play. But when Jesus dies, the law is eradicated. Now watch this. Now pay attention. Preachers that preach generational cases are adulterers. For they are promoting the law of the former husband in the house of the new husband. So when I preach the law when I preach the law, it's as good as I have gone to the, to the graveyard to romance my dead husband. Hmm? It's like I'm bringing my dead husband and sleeping with my dead husband in front of my new husband. Do you get that? Jesus, when he dies, we have been set free from the law. It does not apply again. As much as a woman that was married, she cannot remarry as long as the husband is still alive. But when the husband dies, she is free to remarry. But if she marries another while the husband is still alive, she is an adulterer. So when I preach generational cases, you know what? No. Bringing the law, I am promoting the law of my former husband in the house of my new. It's like bringing a body of a dead person, of a dead husband, to sleep with in the presence of your new husband. 
So preachers of the law are adulterers. Because by reason of Jesus dying, okay, let me read this. Let me read verse uh, 5 again. Watch this. No, verse, verse 6. But now we are released from the law. Having died to that which held us captive, we died. We died. We were crucified with Christ, buried with Christ, rose with Christ. So by reason of us dying with Christ, we have been set free from the law. But now we are released, Romans 7 verse number 6, but now we are released from the law, having died to that which held us captive. We were held captive. We could not move. We could not remarry. We could not do this. We were kept in captivity by the law. But by reason of his death was his, our death, his resurrection, our resurrection, his ascension, our ascension. His glorification, our glorification. By reason of that death, we have been set free from the law. We are no longer under the law. It does not matter. Somebody can come and read from the Old Testament and read it like never before. We are not under the law. But now we are released from the law, having died to that which held us captive, so that we serve in the new way of the spirit. Remember, the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. So those that are preaching from Mount Sinai, they are preaching the letter that killeth, that which kept us captive. But by reason of death, we have been set free, that we may preach the new way of the spirit. The new husband. Look at John John 4. I, I said I'll read that and close. But I want you to see John 4. John 5 rather. John 5 verse 45. John 5 verse 45. I'll close with that. Like close with that. John chapter 5 verse 45. Do you not think that I will accuse you to the father? There is one who accuses you. Moses, on whom you have set your hope. Moses is not talking about Moses as Moses per se, but he's talking about the system. Moses as in Moses. The law is the one that will accuse you. Remember I told you, the sins of the Old Testament, the law would find fault. Say, hey, Rehab was a prostitute, David was this, but the New Testament, it does not record their prostitution or their promiscuous or the sleeping of these maids Abraham or David it just says by faith by faith by faith by faith by faith so I want you to understand these things that the New Testament is the fulfillment of everything in Christ Jesus is the fulfillment of the Old Testament Jesus is the reality of the substances. Jesus is the reality of the substances. Even with prophets, there were pointers. Prophets were pointers. Hebrews 1, 1 tells you that. In sundry times, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. Po prophets were pointers. Not now. Not in this, not today. That's Old Testament. Now we look at the New Testament, but Christ has spoken to us by his son. In the Old Testament, there were major prophets. There were minor prophets. David was a major prophet. He prophesied that the, 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 he said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall, that was a prophetic word. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And when Jesus showed up, he then says, David, that shepherd that you prophesied about, that the Lord is your shepherd, I am that good shepherd. So there were major prophets. Prophets like Isaiah, these were major prophets that prophesied that unto us, 
a child a, a, a child is born a son is given his name shall be called Emmanuel you shall give you shall bear me you shall a virgin shall give birth shall call his name Jesus those were major prophets then you had minor prophets that prophesied about events major prophets they prophesied about Christ minor prophets they prophesied about events they were talking about events they're talking about events. So every prophecy was a target to reach Jesus. Because Jesus, the spirit of prophecy, is Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. So the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. So anybody preaching from Mount Sinai is preaching condemnation, is preaching uh, accusation, is preaching death. But the New Testament, Mount Zion, is preaching the spirit that giveth life. My beloved, I pray that your eyes of understanding have been enlightened today. And I declare and I decree in this season, you will fulfill your ministry. You will fulfill your calling because you are a product of his resurrection. What cannot defeat Christ cannot defeat you. You are seated in the heavens far above principalities away with shadows embrace the substance that is jesus christ the reality of the shadows the reality of the substance i believe that you've been blessed and i pray that you will have a glorious week and just go through this listen to this message over and over you got scriptures go through them over and over go through them over and over over and over and always remember that the Old Testament, the focus was on the prophets. But the New Testament, the focus is on his son, Jesus Christ. The Old Testament were servants, but the New Testament, we are now sons of God. My beloved, have a blessed and glorious day. Jamir uh, uh, Gray, it is good to see you. I pray that you will rewatch the broadcast so you'll be blessed. But from me... I declare and I decree over you in the name of Jesus that whatever, anything that has not been working through the word of God, I declare resurrection. In anything that was not working, anything that was dead in your life, I speak life into it. I speak life into it. Every dry bone in your life, I declare life in the name of Jesus. For God said, I have sent forth my word and it will not come back to me void until it accomplishes that which I have assigned it for. And I declare and I decree. That which Christ has already done. May there be a manifestation in your life in the name of Jesus. And I want you to know that you are a product of his resurrection. You are a product of resurrection in the name of Jesus. You cannot fail in this season. You are meant to reign in life. Jesus said you will reign in life for you are seated in the heavenlies. Far above principalities. I declare and I decree every form of affliction. I flush it out in the name of Jesus. You have been set free. You have been empowered. Go ye therefore and preach this gospel. The Caruso specific gospel. You don't have to exaggerate. You don't have to, to add to it. Just go and take, and take possession of that which you have already been given. The spirit that resides in your inside will enable you I declare, oh my cool, Abarasia Dosha. I declare every closed door, let it begin to open for you in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare open doors for you because Jesus said it that behold, I have set before you an open door. That which that they had denied you access, ah, you, they cannot deny you access ever. I declare access in the name of Jesus. My beloved, have a glorious week filled with the manifestations for this is the time that the earth awaits the manifestation of the sons of god are we the sons of god by whom we cry abba father have a glorious week love you so dearly god bless you shalom